Hey everybody, welcome to Face Off, where we take two films with a common thread, put them against each other, and see which one is the better film. In the 1980s, horror films were like wildfire, and one man was instrumental in leaving his blood-stained mark on fans, the amazing Tom Savini. And on this episode of Face Off, we feature two of his more gore-laden sagas, Maniac versus The Prowler. All right, before we begin, don't forget to subscribe, all that stuff. Let's get to it, it's scary. Maniac is creepy as f The concept is horrifying, the film style built anxiety, and the performance of Joe Spinell was absolutely unsettling. We didn't even touch on the gore yet. Maniac is a classic for anyone who enjoys a realistic, diabolical depiction of a nut job on the loose. The Prowler had some freaky moments and carried it out with an unsettling tone itself. However, some shoddy acting and predictable format made it less effective. You've seen horror films before, but you probably haven't seen anything quite like Maniac. Let's go to the scoreboard. Maniac 7, Prowler 5. All right, moving on to the next category, which is sexiness. Maniac centers on the obsession of a man with scalping streetwalkers. Plenty of sexual situations if you could get past the gruesome tone. Nudity is not in short supply in this film, and Maniac delivers on the sex scale. The Prowler had its hot teens, but most of the film lacked good sex appeal. That being said, there was plenty of sex appeal within a few female casts. Good amount of nudity, but not overly sexy or a sexy flick. Well, I feel like I said sex in sexy like 50 times. Let's go to the scoreboard. It was Maniac 7, Prowler. Five. All right, Maniac is off to the lead. Will it sustain? Next up, filmmaking. Again, touching on the filmmaking style, Maniac is told in a very disturbing way. It works, not to mention the character of Frank is played a little too perfectly by Spinell. And the look of Frank is nightmarish. Sorry, Joe, but you looked wacko. The Prowler was shot well and didn't have any major gaffes, however, it wasn't anything special either. Characters were cookie cutters and you never really cared about them, even when they died horrible deaths. All right, let's go to the scoreboard and see if Prowler can cut into the lead. Filmmaking, Maniac 7, Prowler 5. Nope. All right, we're moving on. When in doubt, plot it out. Next up, plot. The Maniac plot was a bit lackluster. Nerdy creep hunts and kills hookers, but the fact that he rips the tops of their heads off and puts them on mannequins should get points for being twisted, right? The horrors of war and adjusting to the real world has been depicted in several films. That being said, not many horror films, am I right? The Prowler worked for just that reason. I mean, it's kind of one thing to take, you know, the scalps off of people, but then to nicely put them on mannequins, I mean, that's clever. Scoreboard. Maniac 4, Prowler 6. All right, let's go to our antagonisto. That's for our friends in Italy, where we are the number one YouTube show. Frank is scary as hell. He is the disheveled, weird man you see in public places and wonder how many heads are in his fridge. A relatable and real character. The Prowler really dropped the ball on this. I know what it was going for. It just looked goofy. No killer should wear a helmet and look like a Scooby-Doo villain. Just as we thought. It's the curator. And I don't mean to insult Scooby-Doo because that show was awesome. <laughs> Let's go to the scoreboard and see which killer was better. Maniac 7, Prowler 5. All right. We need to talk. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Kills on this show are very important and graded harder than any other category. These two films, wow. They were a breath of freaking fresh air. Let's go to the kills. The maniac kills are raw and merciless. They are the nightmare of every woman and the effects and gore are just over the top. Just the way I like it. If you don't like lots of blood, an exposed brain, 
you need to check yourself. The Prowler is again Savini in a candy store. Several gut-wrenching death scenes, literally, that are exemplary of the 80s horror film. The pitchfork in the shower kill remains one of my favorites, not only because it had all the elements such as nudity, great looking girl, blood, graphic shots, but it also had something not always seen in films these days, great acting. This actress nailed the pain. She didn't go for pretty or dainty. She sold you on the fact that a pitchfork was ripping through her body. I feel like I really got excited on that one. Let's go to the scoreboard. Maniac 8, Prowler 9. All right, let's move on to the setting. The Maniac setting is in the big city. And while some shots captured the charisma of the big city, the film was still a little bit lackluster. This Prowler was small town Jersey with a spring dance as the focal point. Not bad, but for some reason the setting didn't come off the way they intended. It should have though, but it didn't. So they put all their stock in kills and said F you to the setting. Let's go to the setting scoreboard. Maniac 5, Prowler 6. Before we get to the ending, I want to note that a fan got me this hat, so I'm wearing it. Alright, let's get down to it. The ending. How do these films end? How do they score? And which one is going to win Face Off? Maniac has a bizarre and, well, fitting ending where Frank gets a taste of his own medicine and is ripped apart by his victims in a surreal and frightening sequence. Cue Savini in the toy chest. Blood? Oh, there was plenty. The Prowler went out with a bang, in a sense. But the film's final sequence was not very compelling. It kind of ended the way the film played out. It was okay, but it left you always wanting more. All right, let's get to the ending scoreboard. Maniac 7, Prowler 5. All right, let's go to the final scoreboard and see which one of these Tom Savini gore fests wins. All right, in the end, it was Maniac with a 52 and the Prowler with a 46, making Maniac the winner. It's not often the nerd who scalps humans and puts it on mannequins in his bedroom scores a win, but this is one of those days. All right, that's all for this episode of Face Off. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notifications tab, comment below, let us know if you agree with this. Follow us on all our social medias and we'll see you soon.